Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's grade six practice problem for review on unit five, lesson seven, using diagrams to represent multiplication. Here's a rectangle that has been partitioned into four smaller rectangles. For each expression, choose a sub rectangle whose area in square units matches the expression. Well, first off, you have to understand that this entire length here is three and four tenths. This entire length is two and six tenths. And so I think it would be very helpful to go through now and go, well, how were these partitioned? Well, I believe that this part of the two and six tenths is simply two, which leaves us with six tenths for that length. And then out of this entire uh, side here, that's three and four tenths, this piece of it is three, and this piece of it is four tenths. And so that should help us to go through these. Three times six tenths. Well, here's our three side, which also matches then this three side. And so three times six tenths will get me the area of B. What about four tenths times two? Here's our four tenths. This side here is two. And so C is going to represent 4 tenths times 2. What about 4 tenths times 6 tenths? Well, this side is 6 tenths for A. This side is 4 tenths, so that's going to be A. And then simply 3 times 2 is going to be D. Here is an area diagram that represents 3 and a tenth times 1 and 4 tenths. Find the areas of subrectangles A and B. Well, A is just 1 times 3 and a tenth, and 1 times anything is simply that anything, so the area for A is going to be, again, 3 and a tenth times 1, which is just 3 and a tenth. For B, this piece of it is 3 and 1 tenth, so we're going to take that 3 and 1 tenth times the 4 tenths to have a result here. Then 3 and 1 tenth is the same thing as 31 tenths times 4 tenths. 31 times 4 is 124. 10 times 10 is 100. So we have 124 hundredths. So we're in, in our tenths, hundredths spot, and there's our ones, so 124 hundredths. And now to get the combined area, we have 3 and 1 tenth plus 1 and 24 hundredths, 0 plus 4, 1 plus 2, 3 plus 1, 4 and 34 hundredths square units. And now we're going to draw an area diagram to find 36 hundredths times 53 hundredths. I'll label and organize your work so it can be followed by others. Let's draw ourselves a rectangle to start. And so in theory here, Let's call this longer side 53 hundredths. The shorter side is going to be 36 hundredths. And let's partition this, meaning breaking it down into smaller pieces. Well, if I kind of draw a line across here, let's call this piece of this whole side six hundredths, which leaves us with thirty hundredths, or just three tenths for here. And if you wanted to call it thirty hundredths, you could. Then, for our fifty-three hundredth side, what if we partition it very similarly right down here? And so we have the smaller piece being three hundredths, the bigger piece being 5 tenths or 50 hundredths. 
then it could be very useful to label these A, B, C, D as we find our areas. Now for A, A is going to be that 30 hundredths or 3 tenths times the 5 tenths. And so really we're looking at 3 tenths times 5 tenths, which is 15 hundredths, tenths, hundredths are one spot, and so just 15 hundredths for A. What about B? B, we're looking at that smaller side being 3 hundredths, again, the 3 hundredths times this side is 3 tenths. And so we have 3 hundredths times 3 tenths, which is 9 thousandths. Ones, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. We have 9 thousandths. What about C? C, it appears, we have our 6 hundredths, and our longer side is this 5 tenths. And so we'll have 5 tenths times 6 hundredths, 5 tenths times 6 hundredths is 30 thousandths. Ones, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, 30 thousandths, which of course is the same thing as just three hundredths as well. And then lastly, D. D is that small piece. We have that three hundredths and six hundredths. So three hundredths times six hundredths. Three hundredths times six hundredths is eighteen four zeros or ten thousandths which is ones, tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. Get the eighteen ten thousands and then backfill those zeros. So to get the entire area of the rectangle now, we need to add those four numbers. We have our fifteen hundredths. We have our nine thousandths. We have our three hundredths, and we have our eighteen ten thousandths. And if we put in zeros here to help line things up, we can now add these together. Even eight here, nine plus one is ten. A one plus five plus three is nine. And we just have the one and a decimal point zero. So I'll rewrite that here. Zero decimal point one nine zero eight. So one thousand nine hundred eight ten thousandths square units. Find each product, show your reasoning. We have two and five tenths times one and four tenths. If I call that 25 tenths times 14 tenths, it might require me to take 25 times 14 on the side, which is just fine. 5 times 4 is 20. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus 2 is 10. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 2 is 2. Add those up. Get 350. So 25 times 14 is 350 over 10 times 10 is 100. So we have 350 hundredths. So we have our ones, our tenths, and our hundredths. And we have 350 hundredths, which is the same thing as 3 and a half. Next, we have 64 hundredths 
times 80 one hundredths. Again, I might have to take 64 times 81 here on the side, which is perfectly fine. 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 6 is 6, 8 times 4 is 32, 6 times 8 is 48, plus 3 is 51. Add this up, 4, 8, 1, 5. 5,184 over 100 times 100 is 10,000. And so now we have one decimal point, tenths, hundreds, thousandths, ten thousandths, five thousand one hundred eighty-four ten thousandths. And that's the solution, five thousand one hundred eighty-four ten thousandths. In a review question, complete the calculations so that each shows the correct sum or difference. Well, we add from right to left, and so to have a result to 5, what must have been in the box here to add to 1? I'm sorry, to add to 4. I got ahead of myself. 1 plus 4 is 5. 3 plus 6 is 9. Nothing being carried over to the 1 spot. And so 2 plus how many 1s is going to get me 9 1s? Well, 7. And then, how do I get a 2 here if I already have a 4? Well, that must mean I had to get to 12. And so the only way I can get to 12 is taking an 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. That gets me the 2. Carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus 6 is 10. And then you have 3 there, 1 and 2. How much more do I need to get to 9? Well, 6 more. Well, something similar is going on down here. What do I need to add to 5 to get to 2, or in this case 12? It's going to be 7. Carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. And then 4 plus what is 6? It's going to be 2. What do I add to 8 to get to 4? Well, in this case 14. How about 6? Carry the 1. 1 plus 5 is 6 plus 3 is 9, and 1 plus what is 1? Well, 0. And then Diego bought 12 mini muffins for $4.20. At this rate, how much would Diego pay for 4 mini muffins? Well, I would simply, if I'm getting to 4 mini muffins, that means I'm dividing by 4. And so I can take $4.20 and divide by 4. Now decimal division will be coming up here in a future lesson, but um, using a calculator for right now, this is $1.05 for the four mini muffins. Then how many mini muff muffins could Diego buy for or with $3? Explain or show your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider using the table. Well, can I get, and I'm asking this knowing the answer, <laughs> can I get down to one muffin? Sure. Divide by 12, right? And so if I take the $4.20 and divide by 12, we find that this is 35 cents per muffin. And once you know that it's 35 cents per muffin, you can say, well, 3 divided by 35 cents gets me how many muffins? Well, again, using our calculator for now, this gets me 8 and 5 tenths or 57 hundredths muffins. So that means you can afford a total of 8 mini muffins. with that $3. You can't run up to nine, sorry. That's it for this grade six practice problems review. Unit five, lesson seven, yeah, seven. Using diagrams to represent multiplication. Good luck.